this game sucks ass. It really is a terrible, horrible game. It took three fucking years to make this game. This horrible piece of trash. And not only that, it was made by a team of 100 people. It took 100 fucking people to create the biggest ripoff of Final Fantasy VII ever made. I mean, they took everything from Final Fantasy VII. From the game design, to the fucking characters. Uh, I don't even know where to begin talking about this game. It's so bad. It's... It's... Hey, who turned off the lights? This is in no way a bad game. It's actually one of the best RPG experiences I've ever had. Sure, it may follow some patterns that other games have made before, but in some ways it manages to be a superior game to all the others. And that is mostly thanks to it sticking to a formula that really worked. It took a few risks and played it safe, managing to give us exactly what we wanted from a JRPG. From a good and captivating story, to a simple and yet group of likable characters, to a wonderful and colorful world full of amazing myth and folklore, to an addictive combat system. The graphics are a mixture of pre-rendered background with polygonal looking characters, which allows for some really good looking sceneries, especially when there's water involved. And the water effects in this game are simply beautiful, and you're gonna see a lot of it during the game, either as in cities, caves or ruins. The FMV sequences, despite scarce throughout the game, are gorgeous. Each of the four CDs contains about three or four long and beautiful scenes that perfectly depict what's going on in the game at the time. But the game's strongest point is by far the combat system. It goes beyond your basic press X to attack and instead makes the attacking a matter of skill. As each blow lands, the player must press the attack button again with precise timing to activate the next blow thus creating a system of combos that makes each battle not just fresh and interesting, but also an addictive experience. But this is not even the most awesome part of the battles. That title is reserved for the amazing Dragoon transformations that you can do after you've accumulated enough combo points or SP and go something like this. Go, go, power Rangers! Dragoon, not only does it make the battles much more intense, it also allows new attacks, new magic, and the ability to summon dragons. There's a different dragon you can summon with each Dragoon, and it deals damage according to each character's element. The story is your typical adventure based on the battle between good and evil. It revolves around a warrior named Dart, and starts with him coming home after spending a few years chasing after the monster that destroyed his village when he was young killing his parents in the process. As he arrives to his foster village, he finds that it has been attacked by the army of Sandora and that they have kidnapped his childhood friend, Shana, because of her mysterious powers. And now Dart has to go out and save her. This of course leads to a series of events that will take Dart and the companions he meets along the way into an epic adventure that will ultimately end with them having to save the world. Well, I'm not gonna spoil the rest, I'm just gonna go let you try it for yourself. And if you are as much of an RPG gamer as I am, you will not want to miss this game. So, I'll see you on the next episode, I hope you liked it, and go check this game out. It's really fun to play, and it has almost no flaws at all. Thank you for watching, I'll see you later.
No flaws. Really? Let me tell you the flaws of this fucking game. Give me just a second. The characters in this game are so bad, so boring, so uninspiring. I mean, they're a complete joke. They're a complete ripoff of Final Fantasy VII. Starting with the typical blonde guy with spiky hair, your helpless princess looking useful female character that nobody uses, to your annoying teenage girl that nobody gives a fuck about. I mean, come on. Would it have hurt if you had just the least bit of originality? And the villains. Oh my god. The villains. Do you want to know how terrible the villains are? One of them is, wait for it, a mysterious looking swordsman with a black cape, silver hair, and a huge ass sword. Now, where do you think we have ever seen such a thing? <laughs> you wish. Instead of that, you get a cheap version of Sephiroth named, wait for it, fucking Lloyd. Yeah, yeah. They named our hero's rival, the one who ends up killing his best friend, the one we spend the entire second act of the game chasing after, fucking Lloyd. I mean, with all the names in the world, you could have used to name a sword and sorcery type villain, they gave us this. Stamp a double stamp. You can't dribble stamp a double stamp, Lloyd. You can't dribble stamp a double stamp. Lloyd, Lloyd, you guys. <laughs> you can imagine what this did for me as I was playing the game. Every time the guy showed up, all I could think was, I'm gonna kill you, Lloyd. Yeah, painful, isn't it? But Lloyd was not the only boss with a terrible name in this game. Oh no. The final boss of this horror game was also a carrier of the stupidest name, the most unpronounceable name I could ever imagine. I can't even remember what it was. What was it again? Mabel Frama! Huh? Yeah, that's right. Fuck you, game. Wait, I get it. Only with the world's worst voice acting since Resident Evil could such a name be pronounced. Oh yeah, the voice acting in this game is so bad. So horribly bad. <laughs> Just take a look. Black monster cannot exist. I have been waiting for this moment. I kept you waiting so long. You were almost a Jill sandwich. <laughs> You're right. All right. That's enough for me. I gotta get to the hospital. I think I've punctured her lung or something. <sighs> Tune in for the next episode. Hopefully I'll get better. And I can maybe find a better game to review than this fucking piece of crap. Oh shit. Oh fuck. Motherfucker. God fucking. I had a dream that I could fly. I 
can feel.